Tadej Pogacar finally won his first Grand Tour stage after only nine <laughs> after only nine stages. He got the win. We all knew it was going to happen. I made a video earlier on this year saying he's going to be he's going to rip up the World Tour. He won Volta Algarve early on. Won Bas sorry sixth Basque Country. Won California. What more do you want from a boy in his first year as a professional? I got told by the UAE team that he was not going to be uh, doing a Grand Tour this year, which is uh, a bit disappointing. But anyway, uh, it has changed and he's done a Grand Tour, so it's great. Anyway, so 2 hours 58, but for 48 seconds into Valverde. So we'll just go over to his power file first. Obviously, overall 93 kilometers, 3 hours, average speed 31 k an hour, which is rapid considering there's 2,800 meters of climbing. Give him some kudos. Good lad. Uh, so... Kilojoules, always interesting to see, 3,000 kilojoules, so he was sort of burning well, 1,000 calories an hour, roughly, a bit more than that. Uh, so that's incredible efficiency in your aerobic engine, like, that is really hard to do. Like, most people can probably normalize, sort of, especially for his weight, obviously. Um, that is very, very impressive. And his weighted average power is 325. I think it's more like 340, um, just on normalized, sorry, normalized power, because... Strava weighted average power is stupid and I hate it. And anyone who says it's the same is not. He uses like 20 second rolling average power instead of 30 second rolling average power. It's dumb. Strava just pay up to Cog and he's a legend. Anyway, 50. So, sorry, he's about 62 kilos according to my calculations, which we will see in a minute. So, first climb is Encamp Coldor, Coldordino. Uh, pretty much, pretty simple climb, 318 watts. That's about 5.25 watts per kilo. 5.1, sorry, watts per kilo or so. So for him, that's zone three, very, like, very zone three, not tempo, the sort of tempo, not sweet spot, anything like that, just tempo. So for him, nothing crazy at all. That's That would be very comfortable for him. I uh, was probably did a bit of a rollers just to make sure he's in good, top, top condition. Then under the descent, um, you'll be able to see they weren't pushing it. 50 watts on this descent, not technical. No need to uh, sprint. Anyway, called the gall gallina, I believe is how it is pronounced. 363 watts, so that's 5.8 watts per kilo, which is what the numbers I got from James Knox. So James Knox is 57 kilos, and he did about 330 watts or something about up here, more or less. Um, we'll be able to look at it exactly if you want, and you'll be able to see that he did 5.8 watts per kilo. Also, Michal on Twitter, I'm not sure if any of you follow him, he's a bit of a legend, that man, and uh, he was saying that also uh, that was about the watts uh, required for that climb, about 5.8. So you can see here, James Knox was about... 331 watts and weighs about five kilos less. So that sort of agrees. And uh, unfortunately, Balabalin, big man Valverde, didn't post his power, which is a shame. So anyway, he's about 62 kilos. So again, that was, you know, hard, hard stage for sure. Um, hard climb, but nothing off the chart. The descent is very technical. Um, he hits a thousand watts. You'll see most of these spikes. Um, not everyone's a thousand, but, you know, they're all up to eight, 900 watts, which is pretty tiring. Normalized power is like for this like average is only 127 or something but normalized would be a lot lot higher i'd say closer to 200 250 and also these neuromuscular sprints really tire out your legs so you know you have to be able to descend in this valley road really really easy for him like 230 so that's like zone two pretty chill this first little bit the outer de la comella um is 382 watts so that's 6.2 watts per kilo which again uh is what mihal said um on twitter based on watts per kilo calculations and also James Knox agrees as well so you know obviously not every power meter is accurate um, but you know you'll roughly be able to see what the data is so that's pretty impressive 6.2 watts per kilo for 12 minutes is that that is good like as in if you did that fresh as a you know a weekend warrior type of rider um, people be like oh that's, that's a solid ride mate solid ride and he does this you know obviously nine stages in I mean that's a given but after a tough climb 5.8 watts per kilo that's, that's for like half an hour 40 minutes is, is tough for sure it's a quick downhill Nothing too strenuous on this one. Pretty easy, 127 watts. And then this is starts to get up to more of the main climb uh, here, which just before the descent where the Lopez and Roglic crashed. So 360 watts, so again, 5.8 watts per kilo. That seemed to be pretty thing, uh, pretty standard. He was chasing Miguel Angel Lopez, who had attacked and was up the road with Quintana, Roglic, and everyone else. Then we have a bit of technical downhill on this part here. It looks flat, and it's not really flat. So anyway, this technical downhill where... Everyone crashed. He still does 238 watts. So you can see he's pedaling a bit down here. It's past this lake. Was where, yeah, sorry, this lake here was sort of the bad section of technical descent. And then we have the final bit of Cortals, which sorry includes this bit here. 
Um, but if we look at this, this is where he dropped the big numbers to drop Valverde, and this is where he dropped Quintana. He didn't average too much in these attacks. You can see he sort of went up to 600 watts. Everyone's in so much oxygen debt, it's quite high up as well. Um, but, was, you know, he, he managed to attack and get away. And you can see average 5.8 watts per kilo for the last 16 minutes. So overall on this, on this climb, sort of from the bottom to the top, he averaged 336, so that's a 5.2 watts per kilo for an hour at the end of a stage, but obviously this includes a lot of downhill, so normalize this hour would be like 350, 360, and that is very, very impressive to do, to back that up after another 5.8 watt per kilo ride at four, for 40 minutes. That is super, super impressive, and it really shows what a class act he is, um, all round general legend. So we will look at the Strava flybys. We've got James Knox, we've got Valverde, no one else from the GC group posted, uh, and so we'll zoom out and you'll be able to see it. It's a, la a nice lap of Andorra. Obviously, at the beginning, they were all just cruising around and uh, all together. And on this first climb, James Knox survives. Then we go up, and then just about here, he loses contact and finishes about three minutes down. So we'll take off James Knox, but he's a legend, and I love the man. Um, so this is where he attacks. So if we zoom in, where Pogaccia first attacked, which was just around this corner, you can see he suddenly drops Valverde, and that's when he starts riding off from everyone. So it's about there, and then if we go on to zoom in on this climb, you can see exactly what power he did. And I really like Strava for, you know, obviously they can improve their flybys a little bit and a couple other things. Um, but, you know, all in all, it's, it's not a bad tool uh, at all, which is good to use, and it's good for my analysis. So you can see here, this is where he attacked, um, which got up to 782 and held it for a decent power and then just rode off on his own and put 40, 50 seconds into Valverde, which you can see here, Valverde obviously came back a little bit stronger, but they were never too far out of the road, uh, sorry, out of sight, and Valverde lost 48 seconds. So all in all, very good ride from Pagaccia. He's an absolute legend, big poggy, um, and yeah, it's an unbelievable ride, crazy statistics. Most people, if they could ride 5.8 watts per kilo for 40 minutes for one climb, scenes, scenes, you'd tell your grandchildren about that. He just rides that mid-stage, unbelievable. And then backs up with another like 5.8 watts per kilo for 20, the last 20 minutes of the race, followed by an already hard climb. It really is different, different level. And um, shows how well Pogaccia is going in, in the World Tour. I thought he'd go well, but this is, this is mad. This is mad. So anyway, just watching. Who's your tip for the La Vuelta? For me, I think it's going to be Valverde or Roglic. And probably Valverde, because I think Roglic will crack in the last week. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy it. I'll see you in the next one.